Hi, my name is Dr. Alan Barnard. It gives me a great pleasure to introduce to you one of our newest simulation games. It's called the Hiking Simulation Challenge. It's a simulation that's based on a hiking story introduced in the goal by Dr. Ellie Goldratt. And it shows why it's so difficult to make reliable commitments when there's performance variability as well as interdependency. So let's look at the simulation itself. In scenario one, we're starting with the simplest scenario. It should be very easy to make a commitment. The question is how long will it take a single hiker to complete a 40 mile hike? All that we know is that every mile, the hiker's speed will vary between one and six miles per hour. So maybe the first mile starts with a bit of a downhill and they can walk at six miles per hour. The second mile might be much more tricky uphill and they can only walk at one mile per hour. We can think of the, the speed being determined by the throw of a dice for every mile that they walk. So the average speed that they could walk would be three and a half miles per hour. How long would it take them to walk 14 miles? Well, 14 divided by 3.5 should be about four hours. So let's make that commitment and see what happens. So this is the first time the person walks and you can see the speed there was predetermined both on the throw of the dice. You can see them speeding up and slowing down and we're curious to see how long it will take them to walk. Wow, okay. It ended up that I only walked 2.7 miles per hour, so it took them 5.2 hours to complete the hike. And you can run it a hundred times and see what the total is. We're paying attention to the duration hike there. It looks like the minimum time is around 3.7 hours, the maximum about 8.4, which is shocking uh, more than double what we kind of guessed. And the average doesn't turn out to be four hours. It turns out to be 5.7 hours. So if we had made a commitment of 5.7 hours, it means that we would be only write about 50% of the time. If we wanted to be 100% right, we would have had to commit to the hike taking 8.9 hours. So that's already surprising. But now let's turn on the heat a little bit and see, well, what if it's not just one hiker, but five hikers? How long will it now take to complete the hike? Again, five hikers doing 14 miles, each hiker, their speed will vary for every mile based on the throw of a dice. So we've learned already our lesson. So let's go and put six hours down. And we also are asked to estimate what's the, the gap going to be between the fastest and the slowest hiker. I'm going to guess about an hour, maybe. Uh, let's see what happens. So as a reference, I'm showing that original hiker with just one hiker. And now I'm showing you what happens with five hikers in the process. And let's see how long it takes. So in this case, it's taking much, much longer because obviously we have to wait for the slowest hiker out of the five to finish before the hike is over. So actual time, we expected six hours with a one hour gap. Actual time was 7.7 .7 hours with a two hour gap. And we can run the, the simulation a hundred times to see what the typical performance will be over a hundred times. And um, so it's now simulating it for a hundred times. You can see it's we're reporting essentially what our baseline was versus our test case in this case with the five hikers. And I can immediately see that there's a substantial increase, not just in time, but also in variability between the slowest and the fastest hiker. So that tells us a very interesting story is that the more hikers that are involved, because there's variability in the performance of every hiker for every mile, and there's interdependencies between the hikers, we can only say that the hikers finish when everybody has completed, it becomes much, much more difficult to make a reliable commitment. So imagine a little factory where you have maybe five machines the raw material has to go through machine A, then to B, then C, then D, then E before the finished product is produced. Each machine's performance vary up and down, and there's this interdependency. And I have to make a commitment how long it will take me to complete an order and how many products I can produce in a specific time. So you can see there's substantial difference between what we expected and what happened. Now, the next scenario is, well, I don't want these hikers to finish two hours apart. And this is where Alex Rogo comes in in the storyline, he's the parent that is supervising the, the hike of all these kids, and he just can't allow these hikers to spread so far apart. Um, so he has to intervene. And essentially what he does in the book is after every mile, he calls to the front and says, stop, let's wait for everybody to catch up. 
only once everybody is caught up can you allow them to to start walking again now will that impact the total time or not it's not so clear if it will because the total the time is determined by the slowest hiker but that slowest hiker is uninterruptedly walking they might not be the slowest in every segment they might only be the slowest overall whereas what we're now doing is we actually slowing down all the hikers based on whoever is the slowest for every segment so i'm going to be a little bit more conservative and say i think it might take us seven hours but the gap will probably be less maybe one hour because alex is trying to solve to reduce the variability the gap between the fastest and the slowest it's like trying to solve the problem of reducing the lead time variability that you're quoting your customers is that going to cause your overall time to come down or maybe increase let's see what will happen so again i've got my baseline from the previous scenario where we're not stopping them every mile you can see what happens if we stop them every mile it literally they cannot walk faster than whoever was the slowest hiker that mile it's like if I have all these machines, they have exactly the same capacity and whichever one is the bottleneck determines the rate for that day. So I can see I expected seven hours. It's now taking 10 and a half hours. The gap has been solved. So the gap is now less than an hour, which is good. But we paid a big price. We dramatically increased the lead time by about three hours. We went from seven hours to over 10 hours. Is there a different way of solving the problem? What if we did what Alex Rogo figured out is that what, why don't we take a look at these hikers, see who's the slowest one, make them walk at the front, and none of the other hikers can pass them by. That keeps them together. Um, but sometimes Herbie is not the slowest. He might be a little bit faster than the slowest, but that slowest one that round can always catch up. So let's say we again going to get seven hours with a one hour time difference between the slowest and the fastest let's see what's going to happen so again my baseline scenario there you can see herbie is walking in the front our bottleneck sometimes he's not the slowest and uh, somebody else falls behind but because they are faster in general they can end up catching up and what we find is that we get a much faster time so in this case let's just let it end we're getting 7.7 .7 hours compared to 10 and a half hours and our gap hasn't increased by much only 1.2 hours so that's essentially one one of the things that um alex rogo learned from this hiking example is that we should look at where the bottleneck in our system is we should make them walk in front essentially they should dictate the pace for the whole factory it's no use to release raw materials faster than what the bottleneck can process and that's a way to both minimize the time, maximize the throughput, and at the same time, reduce the variability. Is there something else that we can do? Well, Herbie is in front, all the hikers are faster, the hike is still taking more time. Is there any possibility we can elevate our constraint? We've, what we've done just now is we've exploited the constraint, making sure that Herbie, Herbie never has to wait for anybody if they're a little bit slower over a small segment. We made Herbie walk in front, but what if we can help Herbie walk a little bit faster and everybody else can we do it even faster let's say we're going to go for six hours and one hour let's run it again and see what will happen <laughs> so again our baseline at the top where herbie is just walking in front but we haven't really done any work to make herbie's backpack lighter and everybody else's backpack lighter to make them walk faster we can see uh, with a small change we've been able to reduce the time to five hours for the total hike and still the gap is no more than an hour so that's kind of a, the final results here. Um, I'm really looking forward to giving you the opportunity to play with the simulation, gain some insights, play it with your team, see how these insights can be applied to your own operation, whether you are in a factory or maybe you are a law firm, anywhere where there's lots of resources that are required in a specific sequence to provide a service or to produce a product. And each of these resources has got some variability in how long it takes them to complete the work or, or to work on their part. What is the best way to get the shortest possible time, the maximum throughput, and the smallest variability between the best and worst case. I hope that was useful. If you have any questions, you're welcome to direct message me on social media on Dr. Alan Barnard, and we look forward to your feedback. Thank you.